Santa Award. Hey, congratulations on your new film, Invaders from Proxima B. Thank Thanks you, Gig. So this is uh, such a fun family movie. I, I feel like we need more of these type of movies out there. But uh, but we have to hear it from you. Is What initially drew you that you want to be part of this project in the first place? Um. Well, I have known Ward for over a decade now, and uh, a lot of the people involved with this project as well, uh, Mike Nelson, Travis Betts, and I, given the opportunity to work with them, I don't know if I would ever say no. And um, also, I mean, Ward's enthusiasm, and like you said, like this is a fun, feel-good movie, and those don't come around as often as you, you know, you might want them to, and so... I just jumped at it and being able to work with people I know and I trust and I love and I admire. Uh, I don't know. That's why I got involved was it would, I couldn't really see any reason not to. <laughs> that, that is awesome. So, so where, where, where did the original idea actually came from for invaders from Proxima B? I do, I do love my '80s movies. I grew up in in the Spielberg world. I uh, loved me some ET. Uh, Alf was a big early influence. So I think that was all in there cooking for for the decades. But it was having children of my own. Uh, we we finally got our own home here in Glendale, uh, and and then some fateful puppets I got from Etsy that I was just messing around with the kids one night we were playing and it it just struck me like lightning that all the elements were here and now you know we're living in an age where we can shoot something on our phone uh our buddy Trav uh who has worked with with Sam as well and me going back till college uh I was like mm, he'll shoot it we have the best actors in the world who are our best friends we've got all the elements so the premise came together really quickly in that moment. It was like, yeah, the alien crashes in the backyard and then we'll just figure it out. <laughs> wow. That so so this is one truly independent project. What was it was this shot on the phone? Yeah. 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 iPhone 10. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> yes. Wow. I I I'm I, it's unbelievable because I, I couldn't tell by 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 watching this because I was gonna ask like how how do you switch your camera perspective because you you actually had it on a for, for first person uh, camera perspective and and that explains it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. We got a couple of lenses that could attach to the iPhone from a company called FreeFly Movi, which helped give us you know a little more cinematic look because it was before really the iPhones had the cinematic upgrades in the in the camera package. Um, but other than that, you know, they're especially in a small house like this is there's a real practicality to not having to worry about a bunch of film equipment, just your phone and a little tripod will get it done. And like Ward said, you know, our crew was five people. <laughs> so, you know, we were just all crammed in there seeing what we could do. Yeah, no, because I, I was watching, I was going, wow, this, this is this is an, an amazing independent film that's actually pulled off, especially everything happened in one single location and that and i think i think that's actually terrific i i i'm not guessing your budget but you know we're we're we're, we're not talking about 300 million <laughs> it's whatever you think it is gig it's less than that <laughs> <laughs> so so you you kind of mentioned puppets were gathered on etsy so let's let's talk about what how you wanted Chuck to actually look because I I almost got the vibes of Oscar the Grouch from Sesame Street mm -hmm. uh, for, and I wasn't sure that was intentional or it was just that it was just something that you just wanted to come across because that's that's what you were given as as the playing cards no like the 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 singular puppet from Etsy that I got custom made because I thought maybe I'd do a YouTube channel with that thing um that that chuck ultimately the prototype of chuck was that and i it wasn't really until after we had filmed the thing and some people not involved that looked at it, it was like hey he kind of looks like oscar the grouch and i'm just like oh mm, yeah is that gonna be a problem 
Um, but he has his own personality, his own charm, and what Tom Devlin, who created him, did that really takes it to another level beyond the Muppets and Sesame Street, who I love and adore, um, is these animatronic eyes that, that and the eyebrows that move and just really not just on film but in person you really start to believe that this is a living creature that you love and you are charmed by. So Tom did some magical work, essentially taking what was this stiff-eyed, normal puppet without arms or anything moving and creating a creature that really came to life with the use of uh, a remote control and some AA batteries. <laughs> wow. So Samantha, what... Yeah. How, how... How, how did you feel acting alongside uh, Chuck? <laughs> oh, alongside Chuck? Well, you know, I'm, I'd be proud to work alongside a puppet any day, but the, uh, it was wonderful. And, you know, Ward voices Chuck, voices Chuck. So in those moments when we are working, um, I have him, you know, in my ear. And so that's creating half of, half of the imagery. And then like Ward said, it really is shocking how, how um, what is anthropomorphized the correct word? <laughs> you like start to give this this puppet so much. Uh, you put so so much on it, and it be it really becomes something alive. And also, you know, part of the puppet work is that somebody's hands are in are inside and moving him or moving his hands. And so you do get this kind of little intimate circle of whoever's working the puppet, and then Ward talking and me. So it uh, it was much more. Um, like when you ask, it's like, I didn't even have to think about it because it kind of just happens. You're just there working with them. I mean, I imagine it would be harder maybe with a tennis ball with no face and no anything, but this really did give a lot to hang your hat on. So, so true, so true. Ward, tell us about coming up with uh, Chuck's voice. That was from the original puppet because there are a few videos out there I did with my my kids when they were really little. Um, and, and yeah i think he was named chuck then too and i don't remember the origin of that i think i was trying to find one that was just consistent because i had another one who was like looked like more like somebody from fraggle rock and he went through like he had a cockney accent he had a southern accent i could never figure out what his thing was but chuck just was kind of chuck almost from the jump and um you know definitely made it easier to to hit the ground running when we made the movie now in in the film in a fun film like this because the fact that uh, the story is it's almost like a body snatcher because you're literally like jumping into one body to the next body switching personalities and so on as actors is that challenging to do to play multiple characters in the same project y yeah i mean I would say yes. I, I would say this is one of the times I was really grateful that I've known Ward as long as I have, just because I am not a great, um, you know, impressionist. <laughs> but knowing him enough and knowing some how he moves enough or how he'll hit a word enough, I think just went really far in communicating, you know, when I am Howie. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Ward. Well, and, you know, for me, it definitely helped that I was I was voicing Chuck and had that sort of in me really for years prior to the project. But but so for me to kind of switch those hats, it was it, it was fun to put it into my body, to put the puppet into me and see how that happened. But again, you know, you're just kind of like playing it the way you feel it to me much more fun was was watching what sam was doing in particular because sam is she's such a wonderful actor i love watching sam no matter what she's doing in in this film or any project but to see her essentially channeling me was like i would said this previously i learned some stuff about myself <laughs> Uh, but it it was it, it just made my admiration for her go to to yet another level because actually what she was doing was quite subtle but also very specific. Wow, so Samantha, I've I've seen you in a few projects. A lot. I I want to say all the projects I've seen you are in much much serious roles. So oh, yes. when 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 you when you get a project like Invaders from Proxima B, how how do you approach? 
you know, to uh, to this type of acting style and this type of comedic approach? Well, I think a lot of any any role is very similar in the sense that you're just look you're looking for the person, you're looking for your relationships with the people that are acting opposite you, and you're trying to, um, I think with everything, you know, comedy, outlandish family films, very serious things, you're, you're looking for, I, I mean, to be <laughs> serious about it, you're looking for the truth of something. And, um, and I think you're playing it for real at pretty much all the time. And I think when you do, uh, you do allow for, I think, greater comedy or greater tragedy or, you know, when you're really committed and you, um, yeah, just kind of trying to go for it and not, not question it too much and believe in the circumstances that are handed to you. Well said, well said. And, and, and Ward, I, I, and I know you, you've done sci-fi comedies before, so th this must be pretty easy, like in your wheelhouse all the time. Have I? This is where this is where my memory comes up and really bites me in the butt. Uh, but uh, even if I'm not immediately recalling the other sci-fi comedies I've been involved with, I know I did one for Tom Dev Devlin, Plan Ten, a long time ago. Um, it's it, it is very, very much my in my molecules. You know, just just. It, everything coming out of like 80s creature comedies mm. right like gremlins or ghostbusters you know goonies even to a certain degree like not so much creatures but just a a mixture of this like romp like a really like a really fun adventure and heart where like people love each other and are really pulling for each other and working together to figure it out those are sort of the essential ingredients that I, I love when anything I get to do as an actor pulls on that. But I think a lot like Sam, I, I haven't got to do that much comedy, certainly sort of at the at the Hollywood level and on big film and studio stuff like that's that's mostly been I killed somebody and they're coming after me like that's whatever reason. That's the roles I get most of the time. So it is fun for I guess for all of us to be able to to paint with this brush that's so not only so fun, but for me, so close to why I got into all this in the first place. Well, speaking of uh, someone trying to kill kill you, tell us about that uh, fight action sequence with the uh, with the draconians in that case. Draconian. I mean, Sam's Sam's the butt kicker. Sam, how did how did yes. we navigate that scene? Well, you know, I'm just naturally very tough and intimidating. Throw a great punch. <laughs> Um, that was a lot of fun because we were working in the in Ward's backyard and this wonderful treehouse that he himself built, by the way. And so uh, just being so much of working on these independent movies and stuff like that is problem solving on on the fly. And so just being presented with this and watching Ward's brain work of like, OK, like, how could they be trying to get you? Like, which ways can they be coming up? And we're having this going over here and uh, just building that tension off these you know it's just wonderful to have your life threatened as like a draconian climbs backwards up a slide coming for you <laughs> like, I, I really enjoyed that was a good day and we had a lot of people there that day so the energy was like newly newly flushed in yeah that did feel like a day like oh this kind of feels like a real movie because they're that <laughs> i think that was the, the most people we had at the house on any one day oh, for sure yeah but it it was also a case of we had a huge benefit of again owning the location and being dear friends with everybody involved because we did have to do some pickups and reshoots a long time later to really up the ante on that sequence um actually and even one of the draconians is, was swapped out halfway through which even i can't tell the difference at this point um but it was one where you look at the cut and you're like god there's just we didn't get quite enough um, and it was 117 degrees that day and it kind of slowed us down in some places. So <laughs> it was a, a real extra bonus to be able to be like, yep, guys, come back over. We got to shoot some more stuff at the treehouse. It's still there. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed, especially for you, Ward, produ producing, writing, directing, starring, building the treehouse. I mean, <laughs> what, what else did you do? Did you build a spaceship too and everything else? <laughs> No, no. Oh, you didn't? Oh. I did not. 
In fact, it was my daughter, Bo, who designed it. She drew it as a sketch. And then we passed it off to Tom Devlin, who oh, created right. Chuck and the Draconians. And he created that spaceship as well. Wow. I love that spaceship. So cute. It, and I, I do have to admit that this is a very truly fun uh, family movie. So what's up next uh, for both of you? Because I, I was going to say, you know, this invaders from Proxima B kind of left on a cliffhanger. I mean, you know, if somebody were to come along with a bag of money and be like, well, what's up? What, where's it go from here? Whether it be another movie or a television show, live action or animated, you know, I mean, we're all ears. But um, for me, what's definitely happening, because it's already most of the way done, is a music documentary, an album called Experiment, The Cole Porter Project. Uh, and we've got a bunch of different great contemporary artists reimagining Cole Porter songs. And we're documenting that along with telling the story of his life and the lasting legacy of his music. Well said. I just wanted to go back to how much I do love the animation, though, in this project and how much it adds. So if I'd love, I'd love, I'd watch a Chuck cartoon. I'm just saying. Um, I, the next thing well, I am doing, what? Well, and I mean, look, the the idea of doing it as is like a series, you know, animated or live action. The the dream there is that all of us get together and like work on a show on a regular basis. I mean, that's the dream in whatever form it Always. takes. But yeah. to be able to to do a series with this group of people is is the ultimate dream for me in this business. So yeah, maybe this is yeah. it. Maybe it'll lead to that. But anyway, Count sorry, go in. ahead, Sam. Okay. Um, the Sam's next it. thing the next thing I, I I have coming out that I completed will be um a Mike Flanagan movie called The Life of Funnily enough, Chuck. And so um, so that's what's next. You're still in that Mike Flanagan world. That is, that is oh, just... man. Yeah. And in in like the same thing, it's like when you meet a group of people you love as people and as artists, like hang in, hang on as long as you can. <laughs> or, or do you need to jump on it? Maybe a Mike Flanagan could uh, direct the, the sequel to Invic. No, just kidding. <laughs> I would I would be so happy to pass the directing <laughs> duties over to Mike for that anytime. No problem. I'll let him know. <laughs> well said. Well, anyways, Samantha Ward, thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation. This is a very fun family movie. Like I said, we need we need more of this. And and funny enough, like today I was like going, gosh. I learned something in this film today and I posted on Facebook was going, did you guys know it's 25 trillion miles to, uh, <laughs> to the, to the next solar system. I don't even know why I threw that out there on my Facebook. And people were like, really, how did you know? Really? I'm like, I just saw it in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank okay. you so much for having us.